Grief is not just about losing a loved one. This time on Grief for Breakfast, those daily little losses and the emotional hygiene you need to keep your system clear. Everyday life is full of losses. I don't mean that as a downer. I mean that just through the ordinary process of being alive in this world, sometimes things are hard. Maybe you didn't get the promotion you wanted. Maybe your morning just didn't happen as you needed it to. Like there are losses in everyday life that we usually tell ourselves are not that bad, or we shouldn't be grieving this because things could be worse. Grief belongs to you. <laughs> that might be a strange way of saying it, but whatever you are going through, if you're having some feelings about it, you get to claim that you're grieving. I just want to validate and normalize that for you, that if you're going through a hard time, it doesn't matter how small it is or how big it is. If it matters to you, it matters. The way that we deal with these everyday losses, that matters too. The things that we tell ourselves or the things that you tell yourself when you're going through a hard time makes all the difference in your emotional hygiene. So let's talk about what I mean by emotional hygiene. Emotional, well, let's talk about the emotional backlog, right? The more times you tell yourself it's not that bad, I shouldn't feel this way, I just need to buck up a little camper and get through my day, you are creating a backlog of emotional debris, right? You're creating a backlog because you are not letting yourself feel how you feel. You are basically building up a warehouse of unacknowledged emotions. So without regular emotional maintenance, that backlog can really start to mess with things on a day-to-day -day basis. Let's say that you attend a funeral and suddenly you find yourself crying about a loss that you experienced 20 years ago, but being at that funeral suddenly brought it to the surface. That doesn't mean that you didn't do your grief wrong back then. It means that you are a human being with a lot of layers to your emotional life and right now this is coming up. So if somebody says to you, you're not actually grieving this, you just didn't grieve correctly the last time, like you can just ignore them. But there is something to this emotional hygiene. Paying attention on a regular basis to the things that cause you pain or sadness or anger or disappointment, tending to that on a regular basis does tend to keep your emotional system running a little bit more clearly. It's not that doing emotional hygiene is right and not doing it is wrong. Like I'm never going into those arbitrary binaries about correct behavior. What I am saying is that the habits that we get into around honoring what's actually up for you. I'm having a hard time with this today. I'm feeling really sad or disappointed about this. Allowing yourself to feel what you feel, even if the outside world or your inside voice doesn't think it's valid. Getting into that habit of allowing yourself to feel how you feel, not only is it going to help you right now here in this, it's also great practice for those bigger losses, those catastrophic deaths, anything that the outside world might recognize as grief or you yourself thinks is a valid grief. If you're in the habit of listening to yourself, and allowing yourself to feel how you feel, those skills aren't new when something additional happens. You're not having to reach for an entirely new way of relating to yourself or listening to yourself. If you have practiced that on a regular basis on these smaller G griefs. We have to talk a little bit about loss comparison in order to talk about daily emotional hygiene. So loss comparison is that thing where oh, this isn't as bad as somebody else, or somebody else has it worse, or nobody died, I shouldn't be feeling this way. All losses are valid for the person experiencing it. It's like the, the macro micro spectrum of grief. Where you are or where this experience is on that spectrum is entirely subjective. It means something to you. I think a good example here is like, if you've got a kid in your life and their goldfish dies, and you're like, it's just a fish, it's not a big deal but the kid is devastated. The kid gets to be devastated. You don't have to agree with how much it's affecting them. You don't need to talk them out of feeling that way. You might not respond that way. You're not responding that way because you didn't have the same connection or relationship with the fish. I mean, that is a long-winded way of saying whoever is having the feelings gets to decide whether they're valid or not. Getting into the habit of letting people 
have the feelings they have, even if you feel like you would do something different, that is a muscle. That is a relational muscle that you can strengthen. Letting people feel what they feel without the need to downgrade it, tell them it's not that bad, you're overreacting, you shouldn't be feeling this way. Let people feel what they feel. Just because you wouldn't feel that way doesn't mean they shouldn't. So sometimes those, this isn't that bad ideas or messages can come from the outside world. And sometimes it's something you say to yourself. It's that internal monologue of, I shouldn't be feeling this way. I want you to get into that habit of allowing yourself to feel what you feel. Now, sometimes people think like, I am not doing therapy on myself every day. Like that is a ridiculous request of me. This doesn't have to be a long drawn out process. Checking in with yourself, allowing yourself to feel what you feel, asking yourself, okay, I feel this way, what do I need? What would feel helpful? What would feel supportive when I feel this way? Like that does not have to be a long process. <laughs> this can be a very short, quick thing of, oh, I notice that that commercial is making me really weepy. I'm having some big feelings about this thing that happened in my life. I'm gonna take five minutes to ask myself what I need. I'm gonna take five minutes to just go, yep, I'm feeling like this. These feelings are valid. Is there anything I need when I'm feeling this way? Like, it doesn't even need to be five minutes. Like that was 45 very wordy seconds. It can be much shorter than that. My point here is that when you get into the habit of allowing yourself to feel what you feel for anything, you are giving yourself a mechanism of action that will serve you on the small things and the gigantic things. Checking in with yourself, allowing yourself to feel what you feel, asking yourself if there's anything you need given the way that you feel, like these are rituals, these are habits that will serve you no matter what is going on.